Dr. Paul, I want to talk to you parents who have a problem or a challenge with your child's behavior. We're talking tantrums, throwing things, hitting, screaming. So these are two areas that drive most parents crazy at some point. You might have the perfect infant, they're just sleeping through the night at two, three, four months, somewhere along the way. It could be by a year, two, three, or four. Somewhere along the way, kids realize that, hmm, if I do this misbehavior, whatever it may be, throw a tantrum and scream or hit, whatever it might be, I get a lot more parental energy. So it escalates. What do kids want from us? Sure, they want our love. Sure, they need to be fed and want food, and, but they want our energy. We are their favorite toy. You know how at Christmas you have all these toys and you know they take it, eh, yeah, okay, that's nice. They're playing with the box or whatever. They just want things that are new and changing. Well, nothing's more new and changing than the reactions you can get from a parent. And if those reactions have energy, they're charged with emotion, cha-ching, it is just feedback. Babies, kids, we want more. Ah, my mom loves me, my dad loves me, look at all the energy, even if it's negative energy. So remember that tidbit. If there's something going on in the behavior department of your child, they're screaming a lot. They don't want to do what you want them to do or you know whatever that may be that triggers that tantrum. We'll just call it tantrum or bad behavior. Kicking, hitting, screaming, whatever. Um, throwing things. Doesn't matter what triggered it. What's keeping it going and continuing to make this happen is your energy. I often tell a story on myself. Um, I have three biological sons and my middle son and my youngest son were fighting Oh my gosh. I mean, one time we used to have a pool table. They had broken the, the sticks and they were going at each other's faces like swords. I mean, like it coming really close to the eyes. I'm thinking you guys are going to poke each other's eyes out. So I'm screaming, no, stop. Well, this went on for at least a couple years. And my oldest son happens to be behind the camera right now. There you go. There he is. He goes, dad, do you know that this only happens when you're home? I'm like going, no way. I mean, it's been going on for years. And there, it's extreme, it's every day. It's, it's like, but huh, it's only when I'm home? No, not possible. Well, back then I was a busy, I had a new practice I was building. I'd started an urgent care. Uh, I would get up in the morning, make a pot of oatmeal, put the raisins and brown sugar and bananas out and go to a meeting, go to work, work until late at night or come home and cook dinner and try to help with homework if I had any energy left. And I went to bed and did it all over again. How was any child of mine, because we had a house full at that point, going to get my attention? Being quiet and calm and nice and compliant got you nothing. And that was shame on me for not kind of being aware of that dynamic. But I was just doing what I could to keep it all going, right? So I was the X factor. So I went and asked the other people in the household. We had several, you know, older children, my wife. And it's like, yep, it's only when you're home. What? I was the reason they wanted my energy. And if I'm just calm, that's not energy. So they got energy by acting out. So if your child is acting out, having tantrums, doing any behavior that is, huh, what the heck, driving you nuts, look at the fact that you're probably reacting possibly in a very loving, nurturing way. Nothing wrong with that. But if, it's, if you're loving and nurturing in response to a negative behavior, you're reinforcing it, okay? Or if you're getting angry and frustrated and yelling or screaming or whatever, that's even more energy. They love it, they eat it up. So I had a patient just yesterday or a day before brought this exact situation to me and the poor couple, I mean, they were both at wit's end, literally tears talking about the stress they were having. Now the child wasn't with them. We thought that was probably best given the dynamics that they were experiencing. I mean, both parents were just, didn't know what to do and it was getting worse and worse and worse. So. I had to ask them, well, what are you doing when these behaviors happen? And each parent will tell me a different version of some form of timeout. 
Spanking doesn't work. Those of you who've tried it, yeah, it might work for that split second, but it just, it's again, it's energy. So it's again, it's reinforcing what's going on. I had to tell on myself actually, again, for that spanking story because I wasn't a spanker, but one of my kids would just poke, 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 and just escalate and escalate. And I would say, hey buddy, if you keep doing that, I'm gonna have to spank you. Well, he was out of control already, so he would keep doing it. I swatted him. Yeah, momentarily he stopped and cried and I felt terrible. Well, it happened a second time. Same thing, he's escalating, escalating. I warn him he can't control himself, he's out of control. I spank him again. Momentarily, he's crying and upset, but he calms down and I'm feeling terrible. The third time that was about to happen, I just, I don't know, it dawned on me. What he really needs is a hug. He's out of control. Come on, buddy, it's gonna be okay. I truly calmed myself down, gave him some love, and he actually melted. End of the escalation, right, in that particular instance. So that was my story on spanking. Where was I? I was going somewhere with this. Uh, oh, how do you respond to your child's escalation, tantrums, kicking, hitting, screaming, whatever they're doing? What do you do? Well, we put them in time out. What does that look like? Well, in this case, they put this kid, he was four or five-ish, three and a half, four and a half, somewhere in there. They put him in a high chair. I said, well, how's that working? Well, it was working, but now he's just go so reckless, we have to kind of hold the high chair from tipping over. So you have to be right there. Well, yeah, most of the time. A lot of times I get, well, we put him in time out in the corner in a chair. I say, well, can you leave him there? Well, no, we have to stay there because he'll get up. You realize that's a energy situation. If I'm the kid and I act out, that means you have to be with me 100%, keeping me in the chair, more energy, cha-ching. So I taught them what I found worked for me. And this is not something you're gonna do except for a very short period of time while you're training this child that you mean business. You're taking back control in your home. It's okay to do this, parents, because it is the lo most loving thing you can do. When you realize your child is now no longer adapted pro appropriately to the world, they're just throwing tantrums left and right no, no matter where they are, especially at home usually, just to get what they want. Imagine transporting that sort of attitude into adulthood or into the teens, into a job. When you don't get what you want or the boss tells you to do something you don't wanna do, you throw a fit of some kind, it's not gonna work. You're gonna be fired. So take control now is the most loving thing you can do. So here's how you do it. That is the child's bedroom, okay? I'm gonna show you what you do. The bedroom has to be completely safe. If there's a dresser in there, it probably should be secured to the wall so they can't pull drawers out, have the whole dresser tip over on top of them. If there's things they can hurt themselves on, cords on blinds, electrical cords and sockets, whatever, make sure that room is completely safe. They can be left alone, throwing a tantrum, maybe trying to throw things, but they'll be safe. And here's how it looks. So the child throws a tantrum and they're small enough that you can, Oh, first of all, huh, I gotta illustrate one more thing. When your child throws a tantrum, dropping this cup is gonna be the tantrum. I want you to see the incredible response I give that child. Remember, energy is gonna reinforce the tantrum. So here's the tantrum. Wow, it's a sunny day. Oh my gosh, there goes a black car. I can't believe it. I didn't realize there was so much sunshine. And I'm gonna walk away. Kids over there throwing a tantrum. What are they gonna do? <laughs> There's the tantruming cup. What are they gonna do? They're probably gonna follow me because they want my energy. So let's say they follow me, but they're being calm. They're probably not. Uh, that would be okay. Because we've, for whatever reason, just the process of getting out of there and walking away has re relieved the dynamic and they're settling down. But usually they're gonna follow you tantruming and screaming and pulling at you and that's not okay. So when they're misbehaving, you wanna do this with complete calmness. Now remember parents, this is on you. You're doing this out of love for your child. If you react, cha-ching, they got your energy. Oh buddy, I'm sorry you're having a hard time. As soon as you're quiet, you can come back and be with mommy. They will throw their fit in there. 
They're gonna try to get out of the door too, by the way. So you're gonna have to either hold it or put a little latch, but you're gonna stay there. You're not locking them in their room. You're right there. You're just relieving yourself from having to hold the door. So now they're screaming and screaming and kicking and kicking. Give it a minute at least. They're still screaming, let's say. Oh, buddy, as soon as you're quiet, you can come in. Mommy loves you so much. Bang, bang. Give it five minutes. Oh, buddy, as soon as you're quiet, you can be with mommy. Mommy loves you so much. It could be daddy, too. They're going to eventually settle down. The moment they settle down, please don't do this by the clock. You're going to put you on timeout for 10 minutes. Oh, well, now it's going to be a half an hour. No, the moment they're quiet. Oh, I'm so glad you're doing the bye. Oh, you're not ready. As soon as you can be calm, we can be together. As soon as they're quiet. Oh, I'm so glad we can be together. You know, mommy loves you so much. Let's, what can we do? And you just go do something together, right? You pour on the love and remember to pour on extra love when they're being good. So they don't have to just act out to get your love. Those two things go hand in hand. I hope that's helpful for the tantrums. That's kind of the key. Um, don't react. And truly, you've got to get emotionally detached about this. Walk away. And then if you have to, you do the training. If you've ever trained a dog, you know what they need? Consistency. I was a terrible dog trainer because I could go to the classes and learn the techniques, but I wouldn't be consistent with them at home. You know, sit and stay. Well, you got to make them sit and stay. And at the class, I could do it, but at home, I... I didn't have that consistency. It's the same thing with training for tantrums. Always, always, always make sure the tantrum never gets you what you want, and it always gets you isolation, which is the last thing they want. If you do that, and you're loving on them, and you're getting them out of timeout and pouring on the love as soon as they're calm, a couple weeks, if that, your kid will be a different kid. It's worth the effort. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Paul.